In the name of Jesus. One of the strategies of Satan, especially against a zealous believer, is weariness. Weariness. And I've taught you from scriptures that um, when he wants to do weariness, what he does is to besiege. He just puts enough things around you that does not allow you to go out and to come in. Just like he did to Israel to the point where when God was going to describe the weight of love, he used a mother and a child. He said, if a suckling mother will forget her child, I will not forget you. But when Satan besieges a place, what happened in Samaria, in Israel, can happen. Where a mother will now pick her own child, slaughter and eat. That level of degradation where she comes to a point where her child is an option. Meanwhile, in that period, people were buying pigeon poo as food. That happened because of a siege. And listen, some of you love God so much that Satan knows that he can't stop you. He needs seven years of a siege. In the first year, you'll be praying one hour. By the second year, you'll be praying 30 minutes. In the third year, you'll be praying 20 minutes. But he knows that by the seventh year, you will not even know how to call the name of the Lord. What he does is a siege. Just a little pressure. A little pressure. A little pressure. Sometimes not a pressure. A little pleasure. A little pleasure. Until you weary out. So you find a lady who believes God for great and mighty things. And then she marries. And then the pressures of job and work and children. She used to read five books in a year. Now she reads three books. After a while, she reads two books, then one book. Then the point comes, she wearies out, and she cannot believe what God told her before. Sometimes it is... My father-in-law shared a story that when he was in Kano, then when he was on his that retreat of about 200 or 100 and something days or so, as he was going up the mountain and coming back, he was living with his uncle. And when he came back, he was so broke, he had two trousers. And then when the devil was angry, they stole one. <laughs> the way he said it. When he finished praying the night and come back, the small girl, the uncle's child, that's his niece, will come and open the door. You know those kind of doors? You know, go, go your house. That's what the small girl will tell him. Even TV, you know, get. He says, when they say it, something will feel like dying. You, you start doubting God because that, those words were a pressure to tell you you are a failure. But you know the solution? He said, he will run back again and begin a man take a paper. He will pray again until he believes what God says small. Then he will come back again. Then when something happens and it wants to die, he goes back. It's the principle of scriptures in Jude 20. He said, building up yourself in your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Then he now tells you that if you continue like that, you will not only be able to save others, you will make a difference. That means that you will not be wearied out like the other people. So when the lepers were tired, they didn't eat themselves. Unlike the women, they say, why do we remain wearied till we die? Why stay here where there is no food, nothing? If we go back inside, we die. Let us just face this thing headlong. If you are not going to weary out and believe God to the end, you will have that kind of resolute mind. I will face God headlong to the end. I better die looking for him. We'll still pray for about five, ten minutes. And why we want to pray, I want to ask you a question. Do you still believe what God said? Or are you beginning to settle down? You know, if, if you are going to run this journey, one of the things you will have to uphold, in short, one of the first things you hold is called the virtue of sincerity. I learned that from my spiritual father. You just have to first say, God, you see the way I am now. I'm feeling wearied. But I know you can do something about it. So I want to wait upon you. Can you renew my strength? I, I used to believe that the nations were waiting for my voice for revival. But as it is now, 
I doubt if it's me they are waiting for. Maybe somebody else. When you begin to feel that way, there is nothing wrong. You are not the first person. What you just need to do is how you will attend to it. So in the next five, ten minutes, I need you to pick up something you are beginning to doubt. Something that God said, but as it is now, it looks like it's not going to be feasible again. And like Abraham, you are approaching God to say, is it this Eliezer that will take over? You called me a father of nations, but it doesn't look like it now. Let me tell you, our nation is under a siege. It's so much in a siege such that the things that you should do on a normal day to keep life going is not sufficient again. That way you are supposed to weary out. It's the principle of the spirit city of Egypt. If you put people under bondage, their spirit will break. They will not have ability to do what is planted in their spirit. So this price hike you are seeing and you go to queue, you come back tired, you go to market, you quarrel because of price. Forget, don't, don't just leave it. The, the Satan has a plan. At the end of the day, you are supposed to be so engaged that you cannot remember God nor believe the promises of God again. So in the next five minutes, about five to ten minutes, can you stretch again? I believe. Paramama Sanda Kabaya. I believe that even though there is a casting down for me, there will be lifting up. I believe for an exemption because there is a promise my life has to fulfill in God. Believe again. Believe again. Believe again. When that light begins to rise, you will sense a difference in how you are praying. You will sense a difference upon your spirit. There is an economy in God designed for us when we reach this kind of moment. So we can switch into the strength of him that is immortal. Believe again. Believe again. It is you. We are not looking. It is you. It is not another. It is you. It is you. I don't know whether it is lack, it is sin, it is challenges, it is warfare, it is weariness, it is distractions. But whatever hinders you from believing God is an enemy. Can you stir up what he wrote on your inside? There is something he etched upon your heart by the spirit. It was not written with ink on paper. It was written with spirit upon the tablet of your heart. So that anywhere you turn, you can't run from it. Can you stir it up? Woo! Gara you ata abisam bakati ruhu me serki urauta gara you ata abisam bakati ruhu me serki urauta gara you ata abisam bagadi ruhu me serki urauta amala takamba baba samba patakamba itani Simon Daly, a proper sight of a penata. Have you found Taika? Who can panta separaria? Arai, arai, arai. Who fetani come water? He may, he may, he may. From the left to the right, the front to the back. Holy Ghost, let there be a revival of convictions. Sight of a capinata cambe. I matamamba sapataka. Ah, 
a minute or two, I want to make a prayer. One of the things that destroys us as believers, are you following me? I, I took note of great men. And when I give you examples, I want you to go and study it. Go and study, what, in the context of what I'm saying, go and study Daddy Adebwe, study Daddy Gbile, study Daddy Kumui, just let me give you these three. Are you hearing me? When they began ministry, people rushed in to hear them teach. People caught fire when they began. People were moved to do mighty things when they began. Go and hear their stories. Then now study now. Those people that caught fire when they began, some of them are still there. Are you getting me? But you know what Satan did? Satan made them get used to the teaching. They got so used to it that anytime these men come out to teach, they just enjoy the teaching and go home. They didn't know it was a siege. You know what the siege was about? Those times when you were coming, you were believing God that the that, boy that will say something. That the Kubu you will say something. That the Bile will say. You were believing God, and after it, you will move in that faith. After listening to them for 15 years, the last time you played their sermon, what happened? The men have become greater and stronger, but siege has happened around the members. The members have become used to it. Used to it, not in a positive way, used to it in the sense of familiarity. I'm saying this because as we travel on the journey of our faith in God, you can get used to the teaching. The same teaching, in short, from a less anointed personality that moved you five years ago. Now the man is more anointed, but you, you already know, is it not that he will, he will pick one word and he will do it. And as he's doing it, you are enjoying and you are laughing. You don't know a siege has happened to you. Is it not that the boy? He will just come and say, Romans 14 verse 1 to 6. Romans 14 verse 1 to 6. The Lord said, Baba said, you get used to it so it never becomes a blessing. So one of the things that happens to believers is that you will come to a point where you are used to the minister and used to the ministry. And after you listen to the person for three years, look for another one.
Can you ask God, Lord, let me not enter that kind of siege. Some of you could go on fasting just because you were going to a program where somebody was going to preach. Now you know the person. When you are going there now, you, they, you don't know familiarity is a siege. So a value will not be drawn. Do you see how you began the first day of the program shift? And after five days, six days, is it not this person? We know how the person is. And so when the person started, we know what's happening. And, and so it is no more profiting, even though God is adding measures over measures. A sense of familiarity. I don't want to be familiar with anybody. Anytime I pick it, I want to pray. For me, it's like a culture. If I pick a message from my father, the Lord, and I hold it, it's kamambre kapepe, kapepe. And many times it ends with encounters. You can get used to it. You can get used to it. And an anointed man blessed for you will be before you and you can't receive because of a siege. I know already. I'm aware already. So when I see our great fathers and see how people are familiar with them, I fear even when we grow. Can you ask God, deliver me from such kind of a siege? Let that hunger that I have the first time, let it be more. Let it only increase. Let it only grow. Some of us, the siege is so bad that it's now an achievement. I went to this. I was in this program. I was at that program. Meanwhile, there was nothing that changed. Don't let me be in a siege. I don't want my faith to be wearied out. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Free, free us. Free our minds. Free our hearts. Free us. So I will come in awe. The songwriter said, may I never lose your wonder. Let it always be in an awe to be in his presence. Let it always be an awe to receive of any ministration. Opening prayer, worship. Let there be a sense of awe so that I will not waste on the journey. Help me. Thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray.